Hi everyone, Jim Nova here. Welcome to Overdubbing for Beginners. The techniques I'll show you today can be translated to most any other recording software, but I'm going to show you how to overdub or multitrack using the free open source software called Audacity. Now this software runs on either a Mac or a PC. To get started, all you'll need is a computer, a USB microphone, headphones, and of course, your instrument. So let's get started. Okay, first open a browser window and go to audacityteam.org. And once you are there, select the download tab, click here. The next page, uh, you're going to select the DMG file, scroll down, and then click here to download it. Now, before you start up Audacity in the installer here, uh, make sure your mic is plugged in. Let's follow the online instructions. Now, start up Audacity. Now before you start recording, you need to set up a few things in the settings in the preference menu. You only have to do this once, as every new project you do will retain these settings. Click the Audacity menu, select Preferences, and then go to the Recording tab. Under the Options, make sure only Play Other Tracks While Recording Overdub is selected. Some downloads of Audacity come with other options pre-selected. This next step will be a little tedious, but is absolutely necessary to properly calibrate your microphone if you're going to overdub. It's called latency calibration. First, click the Devices tab on the left column, and under Device, make sure your external mic is selected. In my case, it's the Audio-Technica AT2020. Now place the mic where you plan to have it when you record. As a reference, when I record, I place the mic about 12 feet in front of me at shoulder level. Now click out of this menu and go up to Generate and click Rhythm Track. You'll now see a dialog box on creating a click track. This is just a sound check, so I've chosen 120 beats per minute in 4-4 for 5 bars. Once that's created, select the Tracks menu, Add New, and select Mono Track. For test purposes, make sure the recording level, also known as the gain, is set all the way up and no headphones are plugged in. You want this click track to play through your computer speakers for this test. Now this next step is very important. Anytime you're recording overdubs in Audacity, you must first click pause, then record. Now the mic is powered and ready for recording. If you snap your fingers, you'll see the recording monitor move in response. If you don't hit pause first and just hit record, you'll get a momentary delay, which will be very frustrating. So again, pause, record then pause again to start recording. You only need a bar or two to test whether your recording and the click track are lined up. If you zoom in using the little magnifying glass tool, you'll see it's not lined up. Take a close look at the distance apart that they are. Now go back to the preferences menu and 
Then under devices, look at the latency menu and see the number, number for latency compensation. Adjust this accordingly. If the recording of the click track is ahead, make the neg negative number bigger and vice versa. This is the annoying part. This takes some good old fashioned trial and error. After adjusting the latency correction number, close the preferences tab and delete the test audio you first did, not the whole track, and then try it again. Repeat these steps until the recorded track is matching the click track exactly. Remember, you want this to be as precise as you can make it so you, you can record as rhythmically accurate as you can. Once this is done, the settings will be saved for any future projects. Anytime you switch gear or the recording environment, you'll want to run this test again. Now that the click track latency is adjusted, plug your headphones in and determine which ear you want to hear the click track and future tracks. I leave my left ear open as it's closest to my bell. Now we want to set the recording level of your mic. Typically for me, I set it to about 20%. Hit record and try a few notes. Make sure it's not too loud or too soft. Remember, you're gonna to need to hear your previously recorded parts when you're recording new ones, but you also don't wanna overwhelm the sound when it's all combined. Okay, now to set up your overdub. Before going on, I want to issue a disclaimer. What I'm about to show you is my method for overdubbing. I use the same technique regardless of the software. There are many ways to do this, but this is how I do it. Determine the tempo and how many bars of click track you need, including any prep clicks. As my example, I'm going to do a short four bar tuning exercise I give to low brass sections. I'm going to split it into two bar chunks. Determine how many parts the piece you're going to record is and create twice that many mono tracks, then label them as shown. Click the little arrow button at the bottom left of each track to make them smaller and easier to see in the screen. As the mic is sensitive, it's important you make the click quiet while you're not playing. Otherwise, you'll hear the click in the silence before you play. Simply select the lead in, go to the effects drop down menu, and select amplify. Put in a negative number, and now it's softer. Make sure it's soft enough that the mic doesn't pick it up, but is loud enough for you to hear. I'm going to start with the bottom part for two bars. Click inside the track you plan to record in, in this case 4A, and make sure you're all the way at the beginning. Remember, pause, then record, then pause to start recording. Mm -hmm. 
Then I'll record part 1A as it's in octaves. I'll be hearing the other part I recorded while I'm playing this one. Now I'll record the second part. Then finally I'll record the third part. If you're unhappy with one of these, just delete it and do it again. Once that's done, I'll move on to the next two bars. Start a bar or so ahead of where you plan to continue recording a certain part, but in the second track of that part, 1B, 2B, and so on. These will later be mixed together to be one part. Repeat this for each part. Now once you're done with the piece, if you're happy with it, mute the click track. Click the View drop-down menu and select the mixer board. Now place each pair of parts how you'd like to hear them in the stereo space by adjusting the panning. Remember, 1A and 1B are the same voice, so you want each pair to match. Now listen and hear the stereo image you've created. Pretty cool, huh? I hope that helps you get started with overdubbing. If you have any questions about this stuff, please contact me through my website, jimnova.com. Happy overdubbing!